Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Investigamer, and I'd like to welcome you to my first ever Investoween special. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a particularly frightening franchise known as Amnesia. Yeah, I'm going straight for the knockout. You can't start a Halloween special without one of the most frightening titles to ever grace the world of gaming. Amnesia, The Dark Descent is a first-person adventure horror game that involves searching for clues, solving puzzles, and unraveling a tale of teeth-chattering proportions. For some reason, Fractional Games got together in a room one day and asked the question, how can we make a game that works better than laxatives? Needless to say, The Dark Descent was a critical success among horror fans and victims of constipation alike. The atmosphere was chilling, the tension was palpable, and the reveals left us scarred for life. So how did the fanbase react when Fractional Games announced a sequel? <coughs> That's right, there's a sequel. And it only released recently. Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Jeez, even the title is creepier. Let's just call them Amnesia 1 and 2 from now on. Creepy name or not, for some reason a decent chunk of Amnesia 1 fans don't seem to be too thrilled with the new game. They claim it strays too far from the successful conventions of its predecessor. I'm sure you've already pieced it together, but I'm investigating whether Amnesia 2 lives up to its legacy. So let's not waste any more time. This is a machine for pigs. The game takes place unsurprisingly in London, just before the turn of the 20th century. Something else you might find shocking is that you wake up in a mansion with no memory of who you are or what happened to you. Yeah, they're really sticking to what they know, aren't they? In fact, the only immediately noticeable difference is the lack of an inventory system. Oh, and howla fucking luya, no sanity meter, no refilling lanterns, no searching for tinder boxes to light candles. None of that horse shit. Yeah, in Amnesia 1, your character has a panic attack and acts like he's on LSD if he spends too much time in the dark. The novelty of this feature wore off about 30 minutes into the game when you realize, hey, I'm not five. Darkness isn't that scary, it's just inconvenient. I mean, it's one thing to have a phobia, but this guy takes it too far. As the game continues, we quickly discover the title should have been Deja Vu, A Machine for Pigs. You pretty much repeat the same motions as game one. Slow descent into a scary atmosphere, voices talk to you, and the environment occasionally says Ooga Booga. It's a tried and true formula that, I'll admit, works surprisingly well. Amnesia 2 also maintains some of the aspects fans loved in Amnesia 1. For instance, the gradual build-up before finally revealing the actual threat. If you're familiar with Amnesia, you know it takes forever to get the first real glimpse at a monster. And even then, it's across a dimly lit hallway. The build-up in Amnesia 2 isn't quite as drawn out, but I found it to be just as effective. So what does a machine for pigs do differently? Well, pigs. Really, they're all over the goddamn place. Speaking of God, check this shit out. Uh, I've heard of kosher, but this is ridiculous. I didn't know the NYPD had their own denomination of Christianity. Jokes aside, the pig motif is taken both literally and figuratively. Personally, I find this theme to be more captivating than some of the paranormal themes of The Dark Descent. But there is one much larger difference that I believe is the dividing factor for Amnesia's fanbase. The puzzle elements. You see, with the inventory system eliminated, puzzles in Amnesia 2 are limited to carrying items around, putting them in a socket, and activating switches, or some variation of that. I never had to actually read my journal entries to find out how to move forward, nor did I have to search for a bunch of items and craft them together. There seems to be two major viewpoints floating around on this matter. The first one is, A, puzzles are dumber and this game sucks because of it, or B, puzzles aren't as involved, but hey, at least the game is made up for it by succeeding elsewhere. It's a tough call, but I'm going with B. While the puzzles may not be as involved, they were still imaginative. Even though I was doing roughly the same thing each time, the situations were varied enough that it didn't feel repetitive. And that's really all that matters to me. I want something consistent. I want something fresh. I want something new. I don't really care if it's complicated. Also, while Amnesia 2 may have put a damper on puzzle fans, I feel that it has a much more focused environment that supports the narrative more completely than Amnesia 1 ever did. Quickly, Mantis. Find the entrance nearby. 
The children weep in the darkness, and the flood waters continue to rise. And call me modernist, but I prefer things to be more grounded in reality. The Dark Descent was just too far out there in paranormal field for me. So this is probably where Amnesia fans place their differences. Fans of puzzles and more cerebral elements might feel alienated with the new direction, whereas those of us more interested in the tone and atmosphere embrace the more relatable narrative. And make no mistake, it is relatable. Anyone who grew up with post-70s horror will feel right at home in this shocking adventure. It's disturbing, it carries a message, and it approaches the player's psyche from all the right angles. A Machine for Pigs is a worthy successor to The Dark Descent, although I can understand why some fans may feel a mild disconnect. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Be sure to tune in next week for more Investoween.